What's going on guys? It's your boy Zach No C here and today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new album from Lana Del Rey, Chemtrails Over the Country Club. Let's get into it. This is the seventh studio album from popular music icon Lana Del Rey. She is inarguably one of the most talked about musicians in her lane and has been for the better part of 10 years now. And over that course of time, Lana has managed to attain quite a passionate fan base. Personally, I haven't really been much of a fan of Lana's stuff up to this point. I do have to admit though that I absolutely loved her 2019 LP Norman F***ing Rockwell quite a bit. That album really saw Lana moving away from the more pared down and moody direction that she had been known for up to that point, and in turn reaching new artistic heights by exploring more thought out concepts and luscious instrumentation. NFR was really the first record of hers that I saw some genuine excellence in, and it was the sole reason that I was looking forward to this new project over here as much as I was. By comparison, Chemtrails Over the Country Club is a much less attention-grabbing album than its predecessor, a fact that can be extremely deceiving on the first few listens. At first glance, this album is really just a quiet and airy 45 minute meditation that doesn't really have much in the way of impact sonically. The very stripped back and minimalist acoustic instrumentation with little to no percussion incorporated throughout the LP leaves it with a kind of a monotone vibe and not really much to be excited about on the first listen. However, the more I listened and peeled back the layers of this thing, the more I really began to appreciate what Lana was successfully trying to pull off on this project. The strokes of genius on this album are all miniaturized, and they're something that would register much more fittingly through a turntable stylus than the Richter scale. They're subtle, they are easy to miss, but they are certainly there. As was the case with NFR, Lana has co-produced the entirety of this album with Jack Antonoff, who has given similar treatment to the albums of everyone from Taylor Swift to Kevin Abstract. And if anybody understands that the devil truly is in the details, it is definitely him. It is by his and Lana's own design that until you view this album under a microscope, you are very likely to miss the very subtle yet intoxicating qualities that the record has to offer. The intro cut, White Dress, is the perfect example of the patience it takes to fully appreciate what is going on on this record. At first glance, the song doesn't really offer more than this kind of weird, whispered falsetto from Lana over top of some very sparse piano chords that don't really change up much for the song's five minutes at runtime. Listen a little closer though and you will uncover the very cinematic commentary on Lana's beginnings in the music industry and how she's grown to resent the very dark underbelly thereof, even going as far as to wonder if she was better off before she was ever famous. I love how she juxtaposes the stories that she tells on this track, looking back to her first real performance at this Men in Music business conference as the first time she ever felt truly seen, and yet now she looks back on that very same memory as the beginning of the end of the much simpler life that she used to live. The instrumental also very cleverly varies its intensity around whatever Lana is saying on the track at the time, and that odd vocal inflection that initially turned me off is later proven to be completely instrumental in communicating the innocence lost that this song is really trying to capture in its lyrics. These themes are pretty much the MO throughout the entire record, however, if you give it the time to really learn how to speak its language, then it's apparent how blindingly bright the artistic achievements on this album do shine. The first leg of the LP is particularly fantastic to my ear. The stretch from white dress all the way to dark but just a game has very few missteps to speak of. The title track is another piano ballad with a very stunning hook and lyrics that use the metaphor of chemtrails over the country club to describe the darkness that lurks within something that might otherwise seem idyllic and beautiful. Tulsa Jesus Freak is the first song on the album to incorporate anything that I could really describe as a rhythm, and its comparatively high energy to the tracks that preceded it really helped to give the track list a sense of progression. Jack's fingerprints are all over the instrumental here, and 
thanks to the very lush vocal layers that just wash over me with every passing bridge, this track ends up being one of my favorites on the entire LP. Moving on though, Let Me Love You Like a Woman is a pretty by the numbers Lana track that doesn't really have anything new or unique to rave about. Despite that though, the song does a good enough job at keeping the album's vibe consistent and doesn't really do anything so offensive that it derails the enjoyment of the album before the very excellent Wild at Heart can finally make an appearance. There's a lot of very catchy elements to the track, with its beautiful, very sticky vocal passages, and a country flavor in the songwriting that really makes this song feel like a breath of fresh air, both in the context of the record and in the context of Lana's greater discography. I'm not going to say Lana is in your face or anything on here, but her approach to melody on this cut definitely strikes a very interesting balance between the very low-key aspects of this record and a more demanding blueprint. As much as I do love this song, though, the real showstopper in the track list comes in the form of the song Dark But Just a Game. The production on this track is just absolutely to die for, finally incorporating some more straightforward percussion into the mix, set against a grooving bass line and a really beautiful plucked guitar melody. The tempo isn't really increasing here or anything, and despite the track's more rhythmic inclination, it still fits like a glove into the vibe of the record overall. Lana's harmonies on this track are just so insane to me, and I love all of the different twists and turns that the track goes through. I mean, I really never know what's going to happen next, but every single new section that it throws at me is just so entertaining and so engaging. Lyrically, Lana spends this track really doing a deep dive into the way that the music industry, especially with high-level artists, can really pressure them to fit a certain archetype or be a certain way, and how that pressure can really cause an artist to lose themselves if they don't resist it. All in all, it is really the most well-rounded track here, and without a doubt it ends up being my absolute favorite track on this LP. Once we make it to the B-side of this album, however, I do have to admit that there is quite a few potholes in the track list that I can't really ignore. The next two tracks, Not All Who Wander Are Lost and Yosemite, really don't do anything interesting enough to hold my attention and don't really live up to the very high bar that Lana has set on this record in its first half. They both feature some of the most low-key instrumentals on the project, and trust me, in the context of this album, that is saying something. And Lana's vocal performances really aren't that memorable either, which left both of these songs just being kind of forgettable to me. The tracks also have some pretty lazy lyricism, and while they aren't really skips for me as they do help the album flow pretty cohesively into its final act, I don't really have many positive thoughts to share on them individually. The song Breaking Up Slowly featuring Nikki Lane is a much needed course correction. It's a shimmering and heartfelt duet between Lana and Nikki that explains the pain of slowly growing apart from your significant other. The country flavor is back in full force on this track, and the very pretty steel string guitars coupled with a very deep bass line complement Lana and Nikki's performances absolutely flawlessly here. The song Dance Till We Die isn't a total dud, but I do have to admit that the first leg of the song does come off as pretty muddy instrumentally. It isn't until the beat switch in the second half where the song really evolves into one of the most intense moments on the entire LP, with Lana singing a very impassioned vocal performance over these saxophone riffs and very slick rhythm sections. The track list closes out well enough with a cover of Joni Mitchell's For Free, featuring vocals from Zella Day as well as Wise Blood. While it's not my favorite track here, I do have to admit that it is a pretty faithful representation of the original cut and does feature a lot of vocal chemistry between Lana and her guests. My main complaint about the track isn't that there's anything done wrong necessarily, it's just that it was recreated in such a way where it's so close to its original version that I may as well just listen to that. Still, though, the song does fit the overarching themes of this album pretty well, and is a relatively respectable closer to an otherwise pretty great album. So, coming away from this record after taking the time to absorb it, I do have to admit that I'm really excited that Lana is staying on a much more mature and built-out artistic trajectory. I'm not quite as in love with this one as much as I was with NFR, but I think that that mainly boils down to a preference in the sonic tone of that record as opposed to any artistic failings on Lana's part. 
Yes, this album is definitely one that requires a patient ear to fully appreciate it, but a lack of immediacy isn't necessarily a bad thing if there are genuine artistic triumphs that reinforce it, and in my opinion, those artistic triumphs are certainly present here. The subtle production is the perfect complement to all of Lana's various vocal experiments, and with her being pushed to the forefront on this record, it has served for a pretty compelling listen overall. If the album had stuck the landing in the back end just a little bit better, I mean, this would have made my favorites list without a doubt. Even though that isn't the case here, I can't say that I'm disappointed with the album that we got, and I genuinely do believe that some of Lana's best material ever lands on this project. With that being said, my final score for Chemtrails Over the Country Club is... <laughs> Thanks to everybody who watched the video. If you like what you saw, be sure to drop a like. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram at underscore no see notes for access to all of my exclusive live streams and other content. I really appreciate you coming by, guys. Thank you for watching No See Notes. My name is Zach No See. Stay hydrated, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Hydrated as f in this.